Hi, it's Dave T here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of this Adelan remote control unit for Canon cameras, whilst also asking what do you do when you get stuck for ideas, and is it really worth making videos anyway? So I've come here today to Danbury Common, just to uh, get away from it all. It's actually my birthday today, and uh, I got this remote control unit for my birthday, which was nice. And I was struggling for ideas on what to video and what to film today. Because that's one of the issues of vlogging. It's a case of you need to keep on making films. But that's a good thing because if you don't make films, you don't get better, you don't improve. Okay, so I actually had to drop my wife off for a hospital appointment this morning. That's been cut short. So uh, I'm going to have to pick her up, so we'll continue the review of this later on. So it's fair to say that this morning didn't go as planned. However, now I've got back, I have actually managed to do some testing of the device. And I'll also show at the end of the video a routine of the process for how to actually pair the device with the camera. Now, in terms of external tests, what I did was tried it three times at a number of different ranges. And basically, ex externally with nothing else around, direct line of sight with the camera, it worked pretty much seamlessly three out of three times every time from every distance I tried all the way up to 10 meters, which is the stated range. And actually beyond to about 11 or 12 meters, it would work, but not 100% guaranteed to work, which is fine. I also did some tests where I actually tested with the camera indoors and then actually activating it from outside with a glass door between and that worked certainly with three meters and six meters distances. It may have worked for slightly further. So the other thing I tried was in a kind of high RF environment. So I did that in uh, my office basically. I had a PC running, I had a wireless headset. I also had a mobile phone connected up to the same landline, which was a cordless phone. So I had a phone line going on that. So quite a bit of RF going on. And I had the camera right in front of that lot with the remote device. And that worked fine up to three meters. It probably would have worked further than that. It's just the room I couldn't really test more than three meters. Now, obviously you could get wireless interference. So I can't guarantee you're not gonna get wireless interference, but in quite a high RF environment like that, work totally fine, certainly up to three meters or so. Uh, the other thing I tried was with the camera inside a car. I just put it inside the boot of my car. It's the most convenient place to put it. Uh, closed the door, had all the windows shut and used it again successfully three meters and about five or six meters away with no trouble at all. Uh, one thing I did notice was that when starting the camera, it worked very reliably. When stopping it seemed like you needed a longer press to stop. Now that may be the camera end rather than the actual device here that uh, that's requirement of, but just really make sure that you give it a good press, uh, both for starting and stopping, and it stops reliably. One thing you w is worth noting, it's actually harder to be sure that you're actually recording. So you do, do try and make sure you've got line of sight, and on the EOS R, the actual front light will flash, um, and also the actual video display will show record in the top corner, but you're not going to see that from a distance. It's worth having your histograms. If you do have those on on your information screen, when you start recording, those will typically turn off, which is very much easier to see from a distance as to whether you're recording or not. So that's just another little tip there. So all in all, uh, great little device um, and very useful for where you just want to be able to start and stop the camera, even in a situation like this, I'm only a metre or so away, but to reach in starts upsetting uh, where you're sitting, you start moving about, and upsets the focus and so on. So it's a great device for that. And also if you want to do walk up and walk past shots, it will save a bit of footage where you are get a whole load of footage of yourself walking away from the camera before you walk back past it and so on like that. So really useful. I'm hoping this is going to come out because I'm on a lab mic. If you saw my last video last week about comparing mics, check that out. Um, and there's a bit of noise around here. I've just come outside for somewhere different to film. Maybe not a good idea. 
Hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have then hit that like button and if you'd like to see more videos that I make then please consider subscribing to my channel and I think next week I'm going to be trying to do a general daily vlog of just vlogging throughout a kind of normal day to see how easy that is and stay tuned for that but most of all thanks for watching Okay, so I'm going to run through the pairing process for the Odlan BRE1A with, an, with a Canon EOS R. So what you want need to do on the Canon is go into Menu, and then we're going to go to the Wrench icon, and on the EOS R it's number 5 for the wireless communication settings. Now we're going to select that, and we need to do two things here. So one thing is going to the Bluetooth, and we need to enable that as remote. And then we need to go into pairing. At this point, it's waiting for the Adelan. Now, what I'm going to do on the Adelan is I'm going to press the W and T together for, I think it's about three seconds. It's now paired with the Adelan. We can OK that. And that's pretty much all we need to do there. However, what we then need to do, if you're going to use it in shooting mode, come out of the menu, and we're going to press the mode button. I'm going to swap over to uh, photos rather than video. So now what I need to do is I need to go into the drive mode, and it's in one shot at the moment, a single shot, sorry. And what I need to do is over here, if you notice that these ones here, it's actually for the timers, but it's self timer 10 seconds and remote. And this one is a two second timer and remote. So you need to be on one of those. So if I do that, so now if I try this, I press the button and it's taken a photo. And that's on the first setting. So just the, the dot on the back on the slider. And if I move it to the two, which is for two second, and if I press one, two, and it gives a two second delay. I'm not quite sure why you need a two second delay when you're pressing on a remote control, which is not contacted to the body, but there you go. So you've got those two options of immediate and two second. Now, if I switch back into video mode, I'm just going to go into one of my custom manual settings that shouldn't make too much difference. Okay. Now, if with the device of the Adlan in the video mode, so that's the little slider down to the little camera icon. And now what happens is two things. One is uh, if I press the button, it will go straight into record. And if I press the button again, it will stop record. And it's as simple as that. Now there's an AF button on the Adlan, and that is for the autofocus control. Now the interesting thing with that is if I put something in the shot and I touch, and it will focus. Now if I move this back, because it has servo AF on, then it automatically refocuses. So as we move things around in the frame, move it forward and it will refocus. Now what the AF button allows you to do is if you turn servo AF off, now if I move it back, then it's not going to refocus because servo AF, which is the continuous focus, is turned off. However, if I press the AF button, it will now refocus. So if I move it forward, it's not going to focus because servo AF is still turned off. And if I press, I think, I think it helps if you press and hold. It's designed really, I think, for a photography use where it's the equivalent of half holding the shutter button down to get a focus. So that's the main purpose of it. But in video mode, it's not really going to have much effect if you have servo AF turned on. So if I move it around, it will refocus, so it shows you the focus points, but holding the button there for the AF button 
really doesn't make too much difference, but with servo AF turned off. Pull this forward, and then when I press the AF button on the Adelan, it refocuses.